I think what I hear from people is they are angry with the dreamers because young people who come here as a, as a young child and are marinating for years in these juices, they are, as the dreamers say, American in every way. Okay? That includes all the bad ways. So the average 20-year-old dreamer is about as spoiled and unrealistic and as entitled as the average 20-year-old American kid working at Starbucks. We know those kids well. So these are the Latino dreamer millennials that we're talking about now. How do you get beyond this, this perception that many Americans have that the dreamers are sort of asking for everything be done for me, I'm giving nothing back, you know, they're not big on John Kennedy's ask not what you can do for your country. It's always a set of demands, a set of entitlement. I haven't heard much from dreamers about being grateful that they're here, grateful for the opportunities they have, and eager to contribute back to America in return for legal status. How do you fix that? So um, I just want to make, before I, I go into that, a, a comment on uh, the question that you had asked, Gorber, and um, on the conservative uh, community. Um, and that's one of the most disappointing things that I think it's happening in America, that they allow for um, single voices that go rogue and um, nobody really stands up to them and says, what you're saying is wrong. And we're seeing that right now with the presidential candidates. They all jump on the same bandwagon um, and start you know, saying these ridiculous things about immigrants that are not necessarily true. Um, and I think that it is time for both conservatives, Republican, whatever, um, to really stand up, you know, even if it's in kitchen tables, you know, talking around the, the uh, kitchen or, um, you know, in the media just saying, enough, what you're saying is not true. Um, and now going to the dreamers. I think that that's also, again, another myth and perception. Uh, when we come at it, you know, we went through the same classrooms, the same history lessons, and that's actually where I come from. Um, I wholeheartedly believe in democracy. Um, I love this country so much that I stand up and against this whole notion that you have to be of one party and one party is better and that you know, you, everybody has to be that party in order for the country to be better, right? And, and that's what you usually hear in campaigns, right? Oh, um, uh, we're gonna only fix immigration once we make everybody a Democrat. You know, that's what we need. Um, and I, I stand against that, even though I'm a very progressive person, um, and I, people would see me more because of my political views as a Democrat, um, I try to shy away from that. One, because I have the privilege of not uh, being a voter, so I don't have to make the decision today, right, of where I have to vote. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I, I wholeheartedly believe that uh, our country is greater when we have different points of views and we're able to hear all those points of views. Uh, and I, I push back on the fact that uh, dreamers are entitled and et cetera. Um, dreamers are, are ingrained with that idea of the American dream. Our families, when they come here, they teach us really early on, education's key, you've got to work hard. Um, if you want to accomplish the dream. And, and for our parents and our families, it's not necessarily about them, it's about their children. Uh, and so for us, it's a fight to be able to accomplish that. And you know, when you want something and when um, it's your dream, you fight tooth and nail to be able to achieve it. And so maybe um, people see that drive that we have uh, to make our lives better, or the lives of our community and our families better, um, as a sense of entitlement, I see it more as uh, what everyday Americans, you know, who have come to this country have always uh, had embedded in them and what has made this country the country it is. Thank you for that. And Matthew, my question to you is, as an immigration attorney, you're in a very interesting spot. And I think President Obama and his administration has put you in a very interesting spot. This is an administration that, for all its nice words and pretty rhetoric, has deported 2 million people, uh, 400,000 people a year in an illegal and unnecessary quota that's now out in the open in public knowledge. And we know this because they themselves have bragged about these figures and going before Congress saying, we'll do even better next year. They've divided hundreds of thousands of families. They've lied about it. They've created all this smoke and mirrors. I get paid to follow this stuff, and I get a headache trying to keep track of all the bullshit that comes. Can I say that at the Cato Institute? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to of all the bullshit that comes out of this administration, uh, and it really does confuse things and, and create a lot of fog, and yet, as a trial attorney, you're from a constituency of people that vote Democrat. 
And so when you have a group like AILA, the American Immigration Law Lawyers Association, it puts them in quite a pickle. They have to figure out, are they going to be immigration attorneys today and support immigrants, or are they going to be Democrats today and support a Democratic administration? And it all came to a crescendo recently when they invited, in their infinite wisdom, Cecilia Munoz, the chief White House apologist for the Obama deportation debacle, to speak at their convention. So my question to you is, everybody's got issues here. <laughs> with Your issue seems to be, how do immigration attorneys uh, clean up their own act with regard to their cohort and get them to just do what they're supposed to do, which is defend immigrants again? Well, things have... No matter who the president is. Th things have been turning around a little bit in AILA um, with the new leadership, a, a little bit, only because um, what's going on with uh, the creation of, uh, of, of child uh, deportation internment, internment camps, and that's really what they are. They're internment camps. They have taken uh, the Central American refugees who have uh, are escaped unspeakable violence um, and are, uh, are winning cases uh, when they have representation. It's been proven that they, uh, they are refugees. Um, to, to, to sort of piggyback on what you were saying before about why aren't conservatives standing up, and, and to address your question, uh, there's a, an obligation of Democrats, and I'm not a Democrat, I'm, I'm uh, a libertarian, so I think I am probably in the right uh, place. <laughs> you are right in the right place. place. Um, in any event. You just uh, made Alex very happy yeah. out there. <laughs> um, Democrats have got to, to stand up to the president, not only because of the abuses that are being um, committed against uh, the most vulnerable of, uh, of this planet, but because he has slandered the immigrant community for the last uh, seven years. He has amassed uh, record deportations, and the way he's been able to um, sell this to his constituency and, and make it more palatable is he's, he's advanced this claim that he's deporting serious criminals. Gang bangers yes. is his favorite yeah. phrase. And felons, not families. And right. the, the statistics don't bear it out at all. Uh, in fact, a very small percentage of the individuals that uh, have been encountered and have uh, been removed from this country are serious criminals at all. Um, the Syrac Syracuse University has a, um, uh, a, a statistic gathering um, uh, institute called TRAC Immigration. And they just came out with another statistic. And they show recently in the last year that approximately 10% of all of the detainers that are being issued by ICE against individuals who they want to seek removal against uh, have any uh, criminal record uh, at all. And then when you break down the statistics, the 10% even closer, there's a, a minutia that are anyone that you would consider to be a serious criminal. A, a lot of the people that, that the Obama administration characterizes as being a serious criminal are people that are guilty of the offense of driving while brown. Uh, people that are being pulled over for traffic offenses are considered to be criminals. Uh, the Obama administration has also ramped up federal criminal prosecutions against immigration law violators for returning to the United States after uh, they had been previously ordered removed without first obtaining advance permission from the Attorney General. Um, and, and so he has created this narrative, this false narrative, that, which fuels all of the anti-immigrant hate uh, that there are millions of people among us, among us that are, are evil people and that they need to be removed from this country and he's doing everything in his power to remove just those people. That's interesting, I thought only Donald Trump did that. Well, you know, it's, only, it's, it's only racist and xenophobic if a Republican says it. It's interesting when you think about that, the whole rhetoric of illegal immigrants are criminals started somewhere and when a Democratic president uses a phrase like gangbangers, mm -hmm. we don't raise an eyebrow, but when a, vice, a presidential candidate who's a Republican talks about criminals coming across the border, my liberal colleagues yeah. in the press go nuts. Yeah. Look, here you had a president come in, the 2008 election, uh, with super majorities in the House and Senate, both houses. Uh, you had a number of Republicans who a year before had uh, been willing, to support, two years before had been willing to support Bush in uh, broader immigration reform. And for two years in a row, uh, he woke up in the morning and didn't introduce immigration reform, didn't push immigration reform, didn't speak to immigration reform. He went to bed at night and said that was a successful day. And he did that for two years. If somebody told you they were going to the gym to lose weight, and for two years they <laughs> never, ever went to the gym, at some point you'd say they're not serious. Then when their car breaks down, like when he lost the house, they go, oh, you know what I really want to do? I want to go to the gym, except my car doesn't work and the house won't let me now. Oh. Um, so the I'm not going to do it, uh, I, I can't do it, uh, was nonsense because when he could, he didn't. 
he chose not to. And mm -hmm. I think the secret is organized labor, it's not such a secret, is opposed to this. A wonderful quote from the labor professor who said that every restriction is piece of legislation against immigrants in the history of the United States uh, uh, came out of organized labor, uh, from the efforts against the Chinese, the Japanese, and then 24 and so on. Mm -hmm. um, this is where it comes from. And on the right, this is where it comes from. Who, who thought up and pushed uh, numbers, CIS, and FAIR? They come out of the population control, radical environmentalist movement who see people as a net negative. Okay? They think there are too many people um, because people are not an asset but a liability, which is a very left-wing concept, which is why it's funny. Conservatives write checks to those three groups started by complete left-wing twits. So let me, let me have a discussion about what, what Grover just mentioned, and that is, in terms of creating the fog, I wrote a column once many years ago where I, I made the point that organized labor was opposed to immigration reform, and it's historical um, examples. And even the recent historical example, the last time Congress got into this in a meaningful way in 2006 and 2007, we saw it then. Hmm? And somebody wrote back from the AFL-CIO and said, you know, you're wrong. Here's, you know, we've signed all these documents. We've written it down. It's all written down. We're in favor of this, in favor of that. So there's been a amount of confusion uh, created because when you go into the guts of it and you talk to people in the Senate and elsewhere, you find out that there's all this lever pulling behind the scenes yeah. by organized labor to keep things off this and off that and off the table. Not and off a the discussion. complete secret. Bob Novak, the columnist, wrote a piece yes. about how yes. Obama was the guy who walked into the room during that deal and said, by the way, memo from the FLCO, this thing is dead because he wouldn't allow a guest worker program, which meant you'd lost all the support that was available from the West. And the Republicans also, pox on both houses, they have the same thing because they go forward and they tolerate all this ugly, nativist, anti-Mexican, anti-Latino rhetoric, and then they come forward and say, and you know, vote for us, say habla espanol. You know? it, and the liberals have a right to laugh at that because it's a joke, but you have to be able to laugh at yourself as well. Your side is also BSing everybody by trying to put forward this, this fiction that somehow organized labor wants to increase the floodgates, open the floodgates to bring in more foreign workers so that the steel worker will have more to comp compete with. It just, it's not a reality, but there's a lot of fog that's created on a daily basis by both sides. So my question to you is, how do you begin to sort of clear through the fog? You can't have a, a solution, which I'm gonna ask you all for your solution quickly uh, to follow, but before we even get to a solution, how do you begin to clear the fog so we know who the players are in this game? Gabby. It's, it's very difficult. It's very hard uh, because <clears throat> you, I, as a person that looks at it from me being affected by it, my family being affected by it, um, and trying to really go at it and look for a solution, um, I go in there and I understand some of the concerns that labor has, right? Especially around um, people's um, wages the conditions that they're working in, right? Those are legitimate concerns. But when it comes to, for instance, um, the DREAM Act, uh, for a very long time, they didn't want for the DREAM Act to be uh, voted on as a standalone bill because it was all or nothing. Um, you know, you look and you say, who are my friends, you know? Um, but then you go, and, and I did this in 2013 when there was a possibility to get a DREAM Act legislation um, passed um, and you talk to some of these members, and these members believe a lot of the anti-immigrant rhetoric that is being spewed. Um, and you're like, wait a minute, you know, where do you come through this? And, and the legislation, the people that are writing this legislation, you know, some of them are not pro-immigrant, are not uh, uh, happy with having a lot of brown people in this country and the demographics showing that there will be a day that that would be the majority, right? So... Um, I, I think that we just have to, as a community and voters, um, really need to get more sophisticated in the way they, you know, push forward and and hold, you know, these parties accountable. Um, we are certainly doing that, um, and you know, we uh, in 2012, the reason why we got DACA is because we said Marco Rubio wants to do this. We're ready to support Marco Rubio, and we went to the White House and said to them. You want us to support Marco Rubio, or do you want us to support you for doing the right thing? And of course, then they said, let's do DACA, and you know, mm. people went out and, and supported the president. So um, I, I think that it, it's sad that we hold parties so you know, in our hearts that we forget 
um, that sometimes these politicians and these parties are wrong. Um, and we don't like holding them accountable because we don't like to be wrong either. Matthew, I want to get your answer to this question, and then we're going to throw it open to questions. And we come back to close out, then I'll take a short one minute discussion sure. about um, your solution to the immigration. To try, to try to get some honesty. So, my, the way I would phrase it to you is exactly right. You're up in Buffalo in the trenches, you're mm -hmm. arguing immigration cases, trying to stop deportation. You're lucky you don't live in Washington. You don't have to worry about politics on a daily basis. But from your view as a political outsider, but someone who's dealing with the stuff in the trenches, um, how do you begin to clear the fog to even make sure that the immigration attorneys understand uh, where these laws are coming from and what their battles are about? It's, it's a near impossible task. And the reason why is um, the individuals that are, uh, are arguing on either side of the debate, both liberals and, and conservatives, uh, are completely ignorant as to the actual immigration law and how it plays out. So, uh, for example, um, and, and, they're, and they're using talking points on either side, either anti-amnesty or pathway to citizenship in order to bludgeon the other, the opponent. Uh, when, uh, if you actually look at the, uh, the existing law, there are ways to fix it in, in, a, in a measured way. Uh, but, for example, the, the Senate legislation that, that passed, the quote-unquote bipartisan legislation, it's a nightmare. Uh, they, they try, the Democrats are trying to sell that as a, as a pathway to citizenship. I try to, to dispel that rumor. It's really the baton death march to citizenship because the vast majority of the people that are on that path will never, ever see lawful permanent residence regardless of whether or not uh, they, uh, forget about uh, US citizenship, That's, it's just not gonna happen for at least half of the individuals that are here without any authorization. And the problem is that when you have, you, were, you mentioned the American Immigration Lawyers Association, you have spokespeople from that organization that are in, ingrained into the, the, the culture of, of the association that are assisting in perpetuating the myths that are being carried on by the Democratic Party. Uh, White House talking points often over the last seven years have found their way into press releases or political statements of, uh, of the association spokespeople. And so what I have done over the last uh, decade or so is, is embrace social media. Uh, it's, it's a real, it's a great equalizer. Uh, and it allows people like Gabby to, to have their voices heard. And um, we just have to keep fighting.